Hey there, today we're doing something a little different. I'm gonna be answering some questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. Everything from pricing questions to what our workday looks like behind the scenes to a hair care routine. So I, what do I say at the end? Come join me. Even maybe some hair routine questions. So it's gonna be a little all over the. the, 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 the. So it's gonna be a little all over the place, but it'll be worth your time. I'm excited to dive in. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Caitlin James, and this is a place where we love to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in the everyday behind the scenes moments of our life. So today I'm talking about some questions that I got on Instagram. If you do not follow me on Instagram, I share a lot of my personal life, um, but I also share about the work that I'm doing. And I sometimes ask you guys questions about how I can help you, what um, content I can bring to you to help enhance your life, your business, et cetera. So that's how we got to the place we are today. I'm answering some questions. Let's dive right in. These are really good. So one question was, uh, who taught me photography? It's a great question. I wouldn't say one person. Um, I started photography 12 years ago, back in the day where a lot of photographers didn't help one another everyone view themselves as competitors. Um, but there was one photographer, she was younger, newer in the industry, had a different take on uh, like community over competition, that kind of mindset. Jasmine Starr is who I followed, loved her. She actually photographed my wedding. She's a dear friend to this day. She's talented. She now does um, social media um, content and she's a great educator, but loved her story, loved her family dynamic. I just loved it all. So followed everything she did, read every single blog post, used the gear that she recommended. And then I started taking, once I got confident, I started taking that information and making it my own. And so I would say I'm self-taught, but I had a lot of um, mentors virtually along the way. So um, I'd say that's the best answer to that question. So what does it look like for you guys to have a normal work day? I get this question so often, and I think it's because, um, you know, we have 100,000 followers on um, Instagram, and I would say a large majority of those followers, a lot of people are photographers who are also trying to be young parents at the same time, and it is hard. It's really hard. Um, recently, because my sister comes to weddings with me and we all have kids that are exactly the same age, so if you don't already know this about us, you would find this out on Instagram very quickly, um, but we both have four-year-olds, we both have two-year-olds, and we both have four-month-olds. So when we leave, like three of the four parents leave for a wedding day, getting childcare for all six of them is a little overwhelming. So we are finding, you know, with six kids between the two families, it is a lot. I will say though, we have strategically planned out work times. We work nine to five, Monday through Thursday with a lot of freedom in between. And the way we do it is not the way it's gonna work for everybody, but I will share with you, I shared this in a um, business Zoom class um, that comes with our business collection. I, I get on every month with these students and we just have a conversation, it's wonderful. They asked this question and I told them like, I wanted to make sure I started being more transparent about our setup because if you just see my life, through the lens of YouTube and Instagram, you might think to yourself, gosh, she's got so many young kids and she's getting all this content out and doing all these things. We spend a enormous amount of money on childcare. We have to have help. Um, that is the only way we're staying sane. And so if you've considered like, maybe I should hire someone a couple hours a week, you should. It's worth losing that profit and that, um, that income to allow yourself to have some mental space to get like the business stuff you have to get done, done. That is the key behind getting so much done in a business when you have such little kids. And we still struggle. We still, literally, we had to get all the kids out of the house just to film this because even though we have a big house with a basement to lock them away um, during filming, it's still so hard. They want their mom. They need some help. Someone needs a question. It's, it's a lot. So if you have never thought about getting someone to take your kids for a couple hours or two days a week, it's something to look into if you're a parent. Um, if you are wondering about our workday from the perspective of how much time you actually spend in the office versus how much time you spend shooting, um, that's a great question. And it's a lot less time now that I outsource. It used to be that I would spend hours and hours and hours editing, blogging, doing all the office work. And now, um, probably since 2012, uh, I have been taking away the big chunks like that like five, six hours of work that would come with editing. And I hand that off to someone else and it transformed my life. So I don't know if that answered the full, like what does behind the scenes look like? But if you have more questions about that, maybe I can answer that in the next one.
Another question, Michael doesn't shoot at e-shoots, right? So what does he typically do when he comes? That's a great question. And I actually talk about this in the posing course. He doesn't shoot during engagement sessions because I take so many photos. I do not want more to call and edit. He doesn't need to shoot. He does need to be there for the experience personally. Like Michael sometimes, um, all the time, actually, when we're shooting um, and we're walking to the next location, it just naturally happens that I'm walking out front with the bride talking about bridal things and he's getting to know the groom. Seems like not a big task, like, oh, is it really that big of a deal that he comes? It's a huge deal that he comes because like, for example, this wedding that we shot this past weekend, um, he was at the engagement session. He met Hunter. He got to get to know him. So it's funny. He walked into the groom getting ready area, um, said hi to Hunter and like was doing his thing or whatever. Um, and then when they were leaving, one of the groomsmen was like, so how long have you know, known Hunter? Like, or was that all just like, professionalism stuff. And Michael was like, I mean, I met him once, but we like, we don't really know each other that well. And he's like, oh man, I thought you'd known him for ages. And that type of connection is why he comes to engagement sessions because on wedding days, groomsmen just like, it's so easy for Michael to like get credibility with them if Michael already has a slight experience with the groom, like from the engagement session. So it's really important from a, a relational experience that Michael is at the engagement session, in my opinion. I know that's not possible for everybody, right? Um, he also is there because we film for KJ All Access, so he's walking around filming me do my thing. So anyway, um, another question that I had was, um, if you have a bridal like emergency kit, what is in it? Great question. This could be a whole other video. Um, I've always had one, but sometimes I forget to bring it. it it's a little bulky. I need to like minimize. Uh, but I I brought it this weekend's at this weekend's wedding, and we needed the one thing that I didn't have in it. So the ceremony is about to start. Bride calls me to the trolley where she's waiting, and she's like, "I have red lipstick on the front of my dress," and I'm like oh my gosh, how did that happen? Um, but she did, she had a little mark and it wasn't that bad, but it was a perfect opportunity for me to have white chalk in my bridal emergency kit. And I normally have it and I didn't have it. I had tied to go pins. I had like the command hook for hanging the dress somewhere if I needed it. I had um, some like lip gloss in case the bride needs just some fast extra color. I had some foundation in case like she needed to cover up some like um, shininess. I had everything except white chalk. So if you are building your bridal emergency kit, add white chalk. Why? Because for white dresses, if, now if it's really dark ivory, maybe not, but for kind of white dresses, you can just rub white chalk over it and it immediately hides everything. Not for satin dresses, but for a dress like this past weekend, it would have been just fine. So how, another question, how efficiently do you work through family formals? If you've ever watched KJ All Access, you know that family formals for me, they are fast. A lot of times I'll speed them up because I don't want people to have to sit there and watch 30 minutes of like huge group family fo formals. But honestly, we can normally get a huge list of family formals done in less than 20 minutes. Uh, Michael does not shoot them. He is fully in charge of the bride and groom questionnaire where we ask for everyone's um, list of family members. And what key is we ask for people's names. So don't just say bride with mom and dad. You need to say bride with Brian and Sandy or bride with um, Aunt Louise and Uncle Jim. Like we need the actual names of people because when Michael is walking around the groups or like making an announcement of who's next, no one's listening to like all the aunts of the bride. You need to call their name out to get their attention. So that is a tip that you could use this weekend if you're shooting a wedding. Another question is what is my hair care routine? Uh, and I, I don't really have one. Um, I'm not a good influencer. I don't have a hair care routine, but I will say this. I always get questions if I dye my hair and I have never dyed my hair, not once. I begged my mom for highlights in high school and she wouldn't let me do it. And now I appreciate that. So never dyed my hair, don't have a skincare routine. Another question, can you post a house tour? We've thought about it. I mean, if enough of you would really be interested in a house tour, I very proud of like what we've designed and how we've set our home up. But I'm only going to do that if we have enough comments that people want to see it. If you actually want a pre-finished house tour, we actually did a house tour when the house was being built, but it wasn't really a house tour. It was a pregnancy announcement video um, that Ty filmed because he's filmed our whole life. Anyway, we'll link that below if you really want to see it, but it it's crazy. Like this room was just like, you know, wood, like the framing was up we went upstairs and we we're like, we're having a baby. It was so sweet. It's amazing how much effort we put into the first pregnancy announcement, the first gender reveal. And now it's like, 
There's another one. That's about it. Another question about pricing. Someone said, where did you start with your pricing? That's a great question. When I first started back in 2008, oh my gosh, 2008, um, I started with $750 for a wedding. And then I quickly jumped up to 1600, stayed at 1600 for like six months, maybe eight months, then jumped to 2200 and then um, kind of incrementally increased by $300 uh, at every three weddings until I started to see the demand fall off. So um, once the demand started to fall off a little bit, I, I hovered at that price point until I started to get overbooked or too many inquiries to be able to manage um, again. So anyway, so that's how I handled it. And starting at 750 though, gosh, it's so crazy to, I remember being like, okay, I started at 750 and then like three years, four years later, I was like getting close to 7,000. And I, I'm like, no one should ever pay $7,000 for wedding photography. But then I realized the demand is there. The experience is constantly being elevated and we could do this. So we, we went from like 40 weddings to 25 weddings, but I was making more money than when I was shooting 40 weddings. So um, I will say this, we on my business Zoom call last month, there was a girl that was on there and she was saying like, hey, I'm doing family portraits and all my clients say, they say, you should raise your prices, you should raise your prices. And I stopped her mid sentence. I'm like, if your clients are saying, you should charge more, you are severely behind in your incremental pricing increase. Like if clients are, I, I do family photography, um, well, I have people take my family photos and I have said to them before, I would pay double this. Like I would pay you double for what you're doing for me. If someone ever says that to you, you need to raise your prices like as soon as you click out of YouTube, like go change your pricing guide. You need to raise your prices. And last but not least, how do you say artistic and creative when everyone seems to have a similar style these days? That is a good question. I think you gotta figure out what fires you up with photos. Like um, for me, I know that I love composition. I love composition. I love a good lead line. I love a lot of um, negative space. I love foreground. I love color. I'm not into like the super like crazy muted tones. So I, I have figured out what about certain photos makes me come alive as a photographer and what kind of makes me feel dull and boring. And so I focus on those things. And if you've never defined that for yourself, and it's gonna be really hard to notice and be aware of what you need in order to feel inspired and to create new things that make you feel proud as a photographer. So those were some questions, good questions. I love doing this. Um, so I hope if you ask one of those questions um, or if you've ever wondered some of those questions, I hope this was beneficial and helpful. We will do this again, but thank you for tuning in for a quick little Q&A and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.